How are you guys? Welcome back to Wargaming China. And today, what we're going to be looking at is the defense of Black Dragon Mountain. Now, if you watch this channel and you, and you haven't subscribed, well, you really should because um, each one of my videos leads on from the next. I never really know when I'm going to make a video, so if you don't want to miss any presentations, you should press subscribe. And today I'm also going to mention a few subjects that um, that you might be interested in. So I'll need to hear from you if you want me to pursue those subjects too. So as you know, this is the channel where I um, platform my understandings of the war of resistance against Japanese aggression in China from 1931 to 1945. Um, now, as you know, if you're watching my show, I'm currently doing a campaign where, where I'm looking at um, the campaigns of the Japanese army and the Japanese navy upriver on the Yangtze River where the Black Dragon Mountain is on the Yellow Rivers and on the Pearl Rivers and this is, um, this is the second battle of that campaign for me and uh, Black Dragon Mountain I mean how could I not want to have a war game with the title Black Dragon Mountain now, Black Dragon Mountain is um, part of the Jiang Ning Fortress and um, it is also the beginning of the Fukuo Line, the innermost the secondary line or innermost line of resistance before you get to the city's wall itself. And in the Battle of Shanghai in December 1937, uh, most of the accounts that you will read or that seem to be popular or get traction are the accounts of the Germanized divisions, the 88th and the 51st, around Cow's Head Hill and uh, Purple Flower Drop Rise. And, um, you know, that's where their Panzer IIs were in action around that area with the Germanized forces. But we're not going there. Now, you see, if you looked at the Battle of Nanjing to study the German ice formations, you're going to see that um, even though they do get away at the end of the battle, because they're very well led, they, uh, they were shattered. They were almost shattered when they got to Nanjing. They were completely shattered after it. So the German ice divisions will be rebuilt. And this is what I've said before. Um, the Germanized divisions change, are constantly changing. But some divisions that don't change, except for the fact that they just get worse, are the provincial army units. Now, when you look at the Battle of, Shang at the Battle of Shanghai, you see that the fighting's over by November 26. But indeed, by that time, many Japanese army units are already pushing on Nanjing. Now, um, What we've got to remember about as the Japanese pushed forward from Nanjing, they were not only ahead of their supplies, they were ahead of any actually any um, authorized plan by the Japanese government or even their own group area, group commanders, their own supreme headquarters. It was a case of um, each Japanese commander wanting to get to Nanjing, shut Nanjing in the belief that if they punished the Chinese enough and shattered them at Nanjing they'll sue for peace. And uh, as Chiang Kai-shek is, is already putting diplomatic feelers out to the Japanese by the 14th of December, we can see that the, what the Japanese were not wrong in their thinking. However, I don't want to really focus on the Japanese forces for the Battle of, she uh, for the Battle of Nanjing today. Um, the Japanese forces that we're going to look at is the Yamada detachment, I think it's uh, 131st Brigade of the Japanese 13th Infantry Division, and it's attacking the uh, Black Mountain Fortress in brigade strength with uh, attachments of cavalry, artillery, and, um, and engineering units. So that was what supplemented the brigade. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to start the brigade, the Japanese advance like this. Sometimes I just 
This is just to help me think and concentrate on how to begin the game. Now, if we look at the Jian Ning Fortress, we see that it's a, um, again, just like Jiang Yin, it's not a walled position. It consists of a series of hills around one central hill, which is Black Dragon Mountain. And on Black Dragon Mountain are 488mm guns, SKC-30s of the Chinese Navy, coastal forces. And um, to the rear of them, there's Mufo Hill, is another battery of 88mm SKC-30 guns. Now, the guns are in action. It's undeniable that's where they were. However, if we look at various orders of battles from the Battle of uh, Nanjing, we can see clearly, in, in, from many different sources, 12 88mm guns. So, what guns are they? As you know, I did a video recently on the SKCs, German 88mm guns in Chinese service. And, um, so how come, how is it that we could have four extra 88mm guns here? Well, it goes back to a meeting of the Military Advisory Council. That is the supreme command of Chinese forces. Now, the MAC came up with an idea that because Sheng Ha has fallen, because Zhang Yin has fallen, the defense of the central Yangtze Valley must now be taken to a fresh tempo. It must now be taken more seriously because, you know, the Chinese had entered the Battle of Shanghai in the belief that they could win that battle. And after three months of fighting and hundreds of thousands of casualties, they had been, been forced to withdraw to Zhang Yi, to, to, to Nanjing. Now, it was Chang who wanted to defend Nanjing, and it was his, one of his uh, more forcefully voiced commanders, Tang, that backed him up in this. And, um, you know, on the surface, the preparations for, for Nanjing look good um, but what we must remember is that um, just like at the guns of just like at Jiang Yin where the guns had to be manned by the sailors themselves on exemplarized on you know on um, on on, but on mounts built by the sailors we can't assume that um, We, 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 we can't assume that all the defences were up to crack. I mean, there's lots of literature written about how inadequate some of the defences were at Jiang Yin, how um, some of the machine gun bunkers were chained shut and nobody could get into them, how um, some were facing the wrong way, how, um, how the terrain of the ground itself, the rocky terrain, of, uh, and I'm talking about Black Dragon Man here especially, will dictate that it will be very hard for some units to support adjacent units just because of the fold of the ground and the mountain itself coming down upon them. Now, um, I tried to um, incorporate this into the game by um, having geographical features that would impair you know, supporting fire. And um, when I do the the epilogue on this game will get more into that. But now I want to go back to that MAC meeting. So the MAC decided that it would now form the RDF, the River Defense Forces. And this was to be a joint army and naval command. And it, its sole purpose was the defense of Chinese rivers and the fortresses and the coastal guns guarding those rivers. Now, We've got to say one thing from the beginning. It's very, very, very obvious that the Chinese military command, and especially Chang, uh, never, never give the Japanese Navy enough 
credit. They always, it always seems to jack the Chinese military command. Always underestimates the prowess of Japan, of, J of the Japanese amphibious forces. But, I mean, and that's not to say they're not, they're not it's, it's very difficult to explain because it doesn't really make sense that um, you would believe that, you know, that you, that you would under underestimate the naval forces and the amphibious capability of Japan. But it seems to be like um, a foggy way of thinking that they all jumped into, and perhaps it was just des desperation, because they knew that uh, by forming the RDF itself in mid-December, it shows that the uh, MAC was quite was quite aware that Nanjing had been a cock up from day one. I mean, as I said, Chang was negotiating putting feelings out for, for, for a ceasefire between China and Japan by the 13th of December. So, um, it's such a, it's such a contradiction in areas that, you know, you'd like, you're also having a meeting for the further defence of the Central Valley, for the Central Yangtze Valley. And the Central Yangtze Valley has to be um, defended because when Nanjing falls, the Battle of Wuhan Zhuzhou will commence and that is an important battle because there is so much industry based in that area Chinese industry based in that area and it needs to be defended that area needs to be held so that with the Navy having received um, funding for coastal guns and new equipment their part in the plan i.e. to hold the rivers, to block the rivers, and to hold them with their guns and mines, was workable. Because they, they had the equipment and the competency and the, and the confidence in their men, as Chinese soldiers and sailors were good at their jobs, to do that. So where would the army, where would the MAC, draw its forces from to defend the landward approaches to these um, coastal fortresses? Bearing in mind that um, after the Battle of Shanghai, uh, there's not much in the pot. But what is in the pot are troops that, for the main part, took may, for the main part, are an untapped resource, and we're talking about the provincial armies. So the Riverine Defence Force will be composed of navy units and provincial army units. So when you talk about this, the Battle of Black Dragon Hill, and we look at the Chinese army dug in around the Navy. Well, this is not the Chinese army. These are provincial troops of Sichuan. Sichuan's a clique. And, uh, these men are from Sichuan province. Now, let, I might have mentioned and briefly talked about the troops of Sichuan province before, but um, they are held in much scorn by much of the population of China. Um, commonly referred to as two gun soldiers, which is a rifle and an opium pipe. Um, also referred to as uh, two dollar armies, which means for one silver dollar they'll fight for an hour. For two silver dollars, they'll fight for two. Now, all of that is true, but we have to look at each individual unit of the Sichuan Provincial Army. Now, when you want to find the Sichuan Provincial Armies, it's pretty easy 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. If it's in the 20s and it's an army, it's probably a Sichuan army. Now, the men of Hu Yuan Chuan's 26th Army Group had been transferred from Sichuan. And they had been attached to the, uh, sorry, they were part of the 10th Army Group. And they then were sent to be part of the 26th Army Group under Hu Su Yuan Chuan. Um, and the soldiers defending 
Black Dragon Mountain, and Xi'an Guan Hill. To the north of the city, you know, um, facing the northern Jap the Japanese Northern Drive, are the 41st and the 42nd Sichuan divisions. Now, I had to. Um, I didn't have. I don't have Sichuan Provincial Forces. I was trying to do a bit more research on them. So what you're looking at are the Guangdong Forces that I made, but I did make extra equipment so I could field them as Sichuan Forces. What's the difference between Guangdong and Sichuan? Um, probably cash. So, uh, Guangdong's a lot more... Um, it's, a more it's, a, it's a lot more financial. It's a lot of a richer province. For such one, so uh, for such one, you know, um, you know, um, for such one, probably the same color uniform, but sandals, not uh, not slippers or shoes. Um, now, such one province, as I said, it's a poor province. It's a, it's a ruled over by by a clique, three factions, and. Um, some of its armies have a terrible reputation. I'll tell you about the 22nd Army. At one point, the 22nd Army was sent to, uh, to reinforce a front. Now, on the way to that front, it had to pass through the border into another province. And I can't, this is off the top of my head, remember? Now, the commander of that province, the governor of that province, rather than have the 22nd Division reinforce him to face the Japanese, ordered his own men to block that division because that division was probably the worst that army of two divisions you know, about 18,000 men was probably the worst army in all of China or had the worst reputation of China and you know those men were not allowed to advance to uh, reinforce their allies and then they did the worst thing possible they then looted the arms, the, the depot, the supply depot of the uh, force that they were supposed to go and reinforce, which, you know, again made the reputation of the Sichuan army just plummet. But here we are um, with the 26th army. And um, good commanders. Well, let's have a look at their equipment. Now, their equipment really was examined and there's a report on it by a German advisor and it basically says that um, of these forces, their mortars and machine guns were piles of scrap. There was less than half of the um, standard amount of rifles, so you know, there was a huge shortage of rifles among the 26 army, the two divisions of the 26th army. And then, because of that, there'd be, there'd be small arms, they'd be, lack, they'd be lacking in small arms ammunition too. Now, top that off with um, how poor their support was. I mean, some books would say, Sichuan Division, we'd be lucky, Sichuan Division of two brigades, four regiments, would be lucky to have four 81mm mortars and four 75mm guns in support and perhaps four, four um, medium anti-aircraft machine guns and perhaps as many as 12 medium machine guns for the entire for each division. So that is not much support at all, and then the quality of that support is to be questioned. However, and this is the thing that I love about China, there's the exception. So we'll go back to where do those 88 millimeter guns, where are they, what are they? Well, funnily enough, Sichuan had at Taiwan one of the finest armories in all of China, and one of the products of the uh, of the uh, Taiwan Arsenal 
is 88 millimeter type type 18 field gun now because the, the forces are from such one and there are another report of 88 millimeter guns four of them I don't think it's a bad I'm having a punt that the 88 millimeter guns were present at Jiang Ning. Now, all the books will tell you about. I'll do a um, I'll do a video on the on the 88 millimeter Type 18. But for now, let's just say that it's a very good, very good gun, very capable in the in the anti tank roll, anti armored vehicle roll. Wouldn't take a bad bad whack against ships too. And um, all many things point to the, the many things many clues many dots that have joined up have led me to believe that the eight that this is one of the few battles where the um, type 18 is filled by fielded by the Sichuan forces so let's go back to the battle On the uh, 9th of December, the Yamada detachment launches their assault on uh, Black Dragon Hill and parts of the uh, neighbouring Xi'an Guan Hill. Now, the Japanese are successful in their initial assault on Zhuang, Zian Guan Hill. Zian Hill. I'm sorry, people from China, I, I always put you all over. Let me get this. Let me get the actual spelling of it, all right? Everything all right? No, I didn't write it down. Ah. Zian He Guan Hill. Zian He Guan Hill. So, it seems that the 48th Division is shouldered off the Anhe Guan Hill and makes its way or is forced into the positions of the 44th of the of the third, of the 41st division 41st division. Now this is a good thing because it reinforces um it reinforces the 26th Army position at the Jiangning Fortress. Now then, what I'm going to say next is um, that in a series of attacks lasting until the 13th of December, the Japanese will push all the way through the Fukuo line commence their assault on Black Dragon Mountain itself, which is 325 meters high, and um, push along the center of the Chinese position around the hill, splitting the Chinese forces in two, the 26th Army in two. Now, when the um, Japanese begin their assault on Mufu, Mufu Hill is, is, is not really exactly clear. But we do know that Mufo Hill, Mufo, had fallen by the evening of the 14th. Now, the thing is about Mufo Hill, so many stragglers unable because the Japanese had cut the, fort, the uh, 26th Army off, basically. So many stragglers had been unable to link up the 26th Army, so they had made their way to Mufo, Mufu Hill. Now, when Yamada catches the Mufu, captures Mufu Hill, which will take about 17,000 prisoners, and in true Japanese army style, it will butcher the lot. And now that's just one of the great ma many massacres that will befall Nanjing in the coming days and will forever be a stain on the honor of the Japanese armed forces. But that's not the case at Black Dragon Hill. 
And now this took me a long time to figure out. So you'd have to bear with me here, right? So I went at Black Dragon Hill. You see, if you look at the books, you see, you would expect, and it's, I mean, I've never read this specifically, but it's, you know, you kind of assuming that the Chinese, the Japanese Navy is pushing along the Yangtze in support of this attack. Well, that might have been the plan at a staff meeting at the higher command, but really, what's, what, what the Chinese Navy is doing is going, oh yeah, you didn't help us at Jiang Yin. Um, we didn't see the army there at Jiang Yin. We know that, these, that, this, that there are block ships, ships and the approaches of Jiang Yin. I think there was four block ships and um, um, a line of mines further on on the river bend toward the city. And as I said, the Japanese Navy, all it has to do is come up river, sail up around Nanjing, and that will stop any retreat. And these fortresses are designed to stop that happening. But by use, by choosing the men of Sichuan province to guard this fortress from the landward side, to defend this fortress from the landward side, shows a huge mistake, a huge mistake. I mean, you know, you can say all you like about the, um, the Germanized formation of maybe being able to hold, you know, in a, you know with, a, with a little bit of luck and a lot more ammunition. But, but here you can't. Here you can't. You see that the plan of map for the riverine defence forces is just flawed. Because these men and the, city and the provincial troops are not equipped to face a Japanese army. They don't have the training, they don't have the ammunition. And in fact, the only saving grace about this battle for the Chinese troops is that the uh, 131st Brigade can't ever really put the full weight of its firepower into the battle. And there are a couple of reasons for this. At least one company out of every battalion is on portering duty because the supply lines are just stretched to hell. They're already, the Japanese army is already living off the land, which means they come to a farm, kill everybody and take what they want. And you know, that's at the grass level. So when you look at the grass level Japanese soldier behaving like that, well, you know, you lead by example. And the commanders of this army, the Japanese, I mean, this is the Shanghai Expeditionary Force and the China Central Army, but just like the Kwantung Army, they're disobeying orders. So, you know, you lead by example. If your generals and commanders are doing what the fuck they want, sorry for the language, why would the soldier, the common soldier, who's getting no supplies, struggling at that, and at, and at bayonet, you know, and at the point of the bayonet battle, they're just, they're disintegrating, they're, they're um, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, that there's a lack of discipline, but um, there's certainly a lack of enforcing of discipline. Um, and as I said, you can't expect any better from an army, because this is an army that, from the top, all the way down to the last private soldier, is willing to do what it wants in China, to get what it wants. Um... So um, I'd like, as I said, at this point again, I'd like to, uh, the presentation, I'd like to ask you, you know, if you want to hear more about how to organize a Japanese infantry regiment, you know, tell me. If you want to know how to organize a Sichuan regiment, tell me. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to hear more about um, the weapons and artillery of these units, you know, just tell me, because there's, like I said, there's a few different docos, like presentations I could make after this. So we'll get back to the Japanese Navy. So the Japanese Navy, after having had to take Jiang Yin all by, its, all by itself, has kind of said to the Japanese army, follow me, I'll be right behind you. So they're not going to be here to support the initial advance on Black Dragon Mountain. So these guns, these 88 millimeters, they're never going to fire on Japanese ships. Because the Japanese Navy is not, is not, is not going to be close enough to get fired up by them. And this is a very good thing. Because, as I said, the, um, the 26th Army now basically fighting for its life on Black Dragon Mountain. 
has um, has been surrounded. It could still escape. I mean, there are, it does receive orders. The General Commander Ting receives orders to evacuate to the city. Now, Ting is probably one of the few men in the entire battlefield sitting up on Black, Dra- Black Dragon Mountain who can see what's going on. And we can say a lot about the, you know, the deficiencies of the Sichuan army. But Ting and Chuan made the decision that they're not going to follow that order. They are going to evacuate straight across the river. And they do so. So the 26th Army is one of the few formations get away almost... Well, they get away with a lot of equipment and don't lose as many men as the rest of the army. And that's down to um, commanders putting their men before their orders. So, um, eventually, as we know, this position, Black Dragon Mountain would fall, Mufo Mountain would fall on the 14th, and uh, great atrocity would then occur in the city, and Battle of Wuhan will begin. All right, I hope you like that. Um, I'm always after new subscribers. Thanks very much. See ya.